All right, boys, let's start with taking a deep breath. Well, welcome. I'm your friendly farming family physician, Dr. Nathan Johnson. And I'm, today I'm here with my boys, Aslan, who's going to say hello in Japanese. Konnichiwa. And Kyle, who's going to say hello in Italian. <laughs> and we'd like for you to buckle up as we take an exciting journey around the world into the blue zones where people live the longest and healthiest lives. So I'm going to ask for help from my boys and some help from the, uh, my community here. What does this color mean? Red. Stop. And what does green mean? Go. And what does yellow mean? Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so now I know I'm back in America because we don't like to slow down when that yellow comes. We like to speed up and make sure we, we get through that light because we've got places to go, we've got places to be. And what does that mean? Uh -oh. <laughs> That's the crash, right? So we're going about trying to run multitask, running so many operating systems at one time that sometimes we, we can't keep up. And when we crash, we're ready to crash, I would advocate that we need, we, it's a message to reboot. And when we reboot, I want to advocate that we do with the bright ideas of the blue zone. <laughs> All right, well, thank you, boys. <laughs> All right, well, I'm a family medicine physician. I trained with the United States Navy. I went to medical school down at the, uh, what's now Walter Reed and down to residency in Florida, in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, there we had the traditional medicine where we break things down into component parts. We have a specialist for the lung, for the brain, for the kidneys. And we look for the mechanism, the one single mechanism that we can put in a pill to go from the ill to the pill, right? To, to fix the problem by breaking it down. But what I found out when I, when I graduated, I was sent courtesy of Uncle Sam on a 13-hour journey across the world to this place, Okinawa, where their health and long being was the result of being a part of a greater ecosystem that helped them to thrive. So this is Okinawa, Japan, where my two boys were born. And uh, it's a place down in the south uh, of Japan. It's kind of Japan's Hawaii, beautiful tropical weather, crystal blue sea, great snorkeling. And when you get there, one of the things you, first things you have to learn is they drive on the wrong side of the road. They're on the, the left side. They switched in the 70s from the American system to the Japanese system. So even though you're in long, the longevity capital of the world, if you start driving on the wrong side of the road, you're not going to last very long, right? <laughs> so the military says before you drive, you've got to go through the driver's training. And this is one of the first symbols you learn. And this is a symbol they'll put on the older person's car. So when you stop at a red light, and that light turns green, the car in front of you is not going, they got this sticker, you don't honk. You give them time. They're going to get moving at their own pace, and you, you wait. And the other thing you have to watch out for when kids, you'll see kids walking to and from school often, and they'll just put up their hand, and that means you stop. The car stops, you let the kids go across the road. And what does this mean? So this is a very important sign I learned over there. So when you're at the airport, you know, they have the traditional symbols to get into the men's room and the women's room. But when you go out in town, this is your clue. So sometimes you're up there kind of doing the pee-pee dance, which one do I go into? And eventually you, s you don't want to cause an in international incident by going in the wrong restroom. So eventually you see somebody come out and you figure out this is where I need to go. And you go in there and this is what you see. This is the uh, squatting toilet. So in Japan, you can go from either the extreme squatting toilet or you have these high-tech uh, bidet toilets, you know, that play music and turn light colors and scorch you. And so so it <laughs> very, very different extremes. And which one is better? Well, we'll talk about that. Uh, so Okinawa, they have many of these foods. It's a predominantly plant-based diet. There's a book, Okinawa Program, that looks at how they eat. The goya, the bitter melon, the purple sweet potato. And the other thing is, is the chopstick. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld does this routine where he says, you know, they've seen the fork, but they're chicken sticking with a chopstick. Why, why would they do that? But actually, the chopstick helps slow, you slow down the eating and makes you more mindful a, as you eat. So Dan Buettner with National Geographic, he's the one who brought publicity to these blue zones. And there are five blue zones around the world. Okinawa, Japan, Ikaria, Greece, Sardinia, Italy, and the Goya Peninsula of, of Costa Rica, and then in Loma Linda, California. And then in America, we have there's a Seventh-day Adventist community. And they practice uh, community. They treat eat a traditional biblical diet as they see it, which is predominantly plant-based. They take a Sabbath rest, and those are some of the principles that help them thrive and live long. So there, there are these nine pr these principles uh, that helps people live and thrive. And one of those is move naturally. 
So we were kind of laughing at that squatting toilet. But actually, when you get down to that squat, you know what that does? It helps preserve those muscles. And you'll see uh, 80, 90-year-old women, men, who are, are very spry because they're, they're, they're doing that regularly. You've got to do that every day, right? And <laughs> not only that, it probably preve it prevents hemorrhoids, constipation, be better for childbirth, all these other things. So a lot of things we've designed, I'm not a, against technology, but we've, we've designed a lot of these porcelain thrones that we think are so wow, beautiful, magnetic, you know, wonderful, but they're not in line with the body's thriving and the human thriving. The other thing they do, uh, ikigai is the, knowing their purpose, what is, their, what is their meaning, and a lot of that is tied into the community. What, is my, what am I here to bring to my community? Downshift, so we started out with the breathing, right? Just to relax. You know, it, we're, I practice medicine in East Stroudsburg, which has the distinction of being the longest average commuting time in the nation. So we have these, in America, we're running the rat race. We're trying to keep up, try, get in the bigger house, fill it with more stuff. We, we don't have the time to spend there, and we're, we're racing around trying to get, now we have these, this big house, the kids can't walk to school, they need to be driven about, and we're, we're juggling all these things in order to acquire more stuff. But is that stuff making us happier and healthier? It may not be. So uh, we need to downshift. The 80% rule, here to hockey boo is what they say before they eat. And that's eating to your 80% full. Well, I don't think most Americans would know when they're 80% full, right? Because they got the Big Mac and they're, they're trying to drive in or they're watching TV and, and they're distracted. And they're not even mindful of what went in, into the mouse. They're not even enjoying it because they're rushing through it to get on to the next thing. And a plant slant. So again, we should be predominantly plant-based. Some meats are okay, you see it in those groups. But again, the whole food plant-based diet is key. And the wine at five. This, is, this we saw, our next, my next duty station was in Napoli, Italy. And there, again, you can't uh, ha eat without the vino. And you know, it's, it's cheaper than the soda there, so you have it with your meals. You take your time, you relax, you eat and a sense of belonging. We'll get into these other areas of belonging shortly. So the food pyramid, the traditional American food pyramid was not created based on ideas of what made humans thrive. It was based on agricultural interests, right? So you had the heavy processed grains, which were out there and advocated. But the, the true thing that helps us live and thrive is more of a plant-based. But again, you can't put in a patent on broccoli, right? How, so, but we need to, to look at how do we meet more greens, more beans, more nuts, more legumes, and more of that locally grown produce, and less of the, the meats and processed foods. So this is Okinawa today. Okinawa now has the uh, highest fast food consumption of any prefecture in Japan. A lot of that is the American bases have come in, American influence, and they are losing their long life status. So the younger people are not healthy like the older ones are. So th that comes to a big point of these blue zones. Blue zones are not a genetic accident. There are behaviors that lead to these, and they can be gained. People, places can become blue zone. There's initiatives to create these blue zones around in uh, communities around America, or they can be lost. And we need to be intentional about creating these blue zones. So they did try to bring these fast foods into, J into Italy, and they said, no, we don't want fast food. We want slow food. Are, are you pozzo? Are you crazy? We don't, we're not doing that. Eating food with family and friends and taking our time is what life is about. Why are we rushing this? So no, we're, we're going to do slow food. And of course, we're going to have time for our vino, right? So, <laughs> so Michael Pollan, I think, simplifies this very, very well. Diets can be very confusing. Do I got high carb, low carb, all these other things. But if it came from a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. So wh why is that? Well, healthy food can be made in a plant. It's not that it's impossible. It's just that the economic incentive of maximizing shareholder value means you use the cheapest ingredients, the lowest price, low nutrition, and add a lot of sugar and salt to make it more palatable so you can market it, right? So um, the other thing he says, don't eat food your great-grandparents wouldn't recognize. So more real foods. And you are not just what you eat, but what you eat, eat. So when we, we do the meats, uh, we want to avoid those factory farms, you know, things where chickens and cows are kept in these tight spaces where they can't move. They're eating corn, they're getting antibiotics, they're getting hormones. All those things create a profile of the fats where you have more of the inflammatory omega-3s, less of the healthy omega, uh, less of the healthy omega-3s, uh, more, 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 more of the mega healthy omega-3s. So, um, so we want to move towards, you know, even fish can be unhealthy if it's raised in, in a factory. So did you know that right here in the Poconos, there was a blue zone? It was in Rosetto right outside Bangor, 
and it was an area of longevity. And Dr. Wolf, uh, locally in this area, wrote about this, published about how these, there were no heart attacks in the residents under age 55, and even into the 60s, very few heart disease. And what it was, it was this tight community. It was an immigrant Italian community. They spoke their local dialect, and they came here. They were somewhat persecuted, but that made them grow, grow, grow closer. It wasn't their diet. They didn't have access to olive oil, so they cooked with lard. A lot of them smoked. But in this town of just 2,000 people, there were 22 civic organizations. And so they connected with each other. In the fi homes, there are multi-generational families. You know, grandparents li live with the others, li live with the, with the children. And, you know, again, that, that fostered this sense of community, uh, which, which helped, which is very protective. You know, if you look at obesity, it's almost like a contagious disease, the way it spreads, because we adopt the, the, the habits of those around us. So we really want to foster this healthy community. And sometimes we look at, you know, the, the Flintstones or the Honeymooners, and, you know, we think of these lodges as people in these funny hats. But 100 years ago, a century ago, about a third of Americans were part of a lodge. And these things provided insurance. So when things go wrong, your community members would come around you and help you out. They would uh, provide hospitals, orphanages. A lot of them would have their own doctor. And they would, be, they would be compensated not for doing more visits, but for keeping that community healthy. And so it's just a different model. When, we, we're, when we're caring about those around us, and, it, and this, the, those things are coming not from a giant bureaucracy, but, but from our neighbors, we're not going to abuse the system to the same degree. And we're going to care more about making sure that system I is working. So again, just going through this, move naturally, know your purpose, downshift, 80% rule, eat until you're 80% full, a plant slant, you want to eat predominantly plant-based diet. Uh, we're going to take your, have your wine at five to help us you know, relax. You're going to place family first. You're going to belong, and you're going to find your, your tribe. So what we'll do is close with this idea of, of the cancer. So I in America, we're often considered consumers, right, a consumer culture. And again, we've acquired so much stuff. You know, there's show hoarders where these people are, have their houses filled with more and more stuff. But what this is, it, now these houses are far apart, and the kids can't walk to school, or they don't have neighbors, and w we're stressed out trying to make these happen in order to drive this consumption and the more individual consumption. Well, what is a cancer cell? So a cancer cell is a cell which gets cut off from the communication of the rest of the body and becomes focused on its own growth, its own consumption, above all else. And in focusing on its own growth, its own consumption, only itself and not the host, the community, the ecosystem of which it's part of, it kills off the very thing that gives it life. So I want to advocate the Blue Zone principles are not the focus on, on your own growth, but the community you're part of. And that community is what will give you the longest and healthiest life. Thank you.